Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi, and if you guys are new to this channel, we're Addicted Fishing. We have educational, inspiring, and entertaining content of all different kinds of fishing from all over the world. Today's a little educational piece on how to trout fish. This is the basics for your very first time if you're going out, trying to start, start trout fishing, trying to get out and fish your stocked lakes and ponds around you, wherever you live in the country or the world. This is the couple of the best setups that you need to just get started and get out there and have fun. So if you guys wanna learn more, stay tuned. It's coming at you right now. So the first thing I'm gonna set up and what I'm gonna recommend for most of any of you anglers out there that are just getting into trout fishing, it's gonna basically be your slide float setup. I think it's a little easier to start with some kind of slide float setup or some sort of bobber setup to start fishing because you're not gonna be dealing with the bottom of the lake. A lot of people would recommend that you start with a bottom fishing setup with some sort of power bait or anything, but I like the slide float setup because you can fish any variation of bait, you can fish anything you need, and you can fish a multitude of depths. You can go up and down with your bobber stops, which I'm about to show you here in a second, and you can fish different depths of the lake. You can be on bottom as well as on the surface in the exact same time just by reeling in and sliding your stop up and down to control how deep you are. So what I have here is your most common and basically run of the mill slide float setup. I have a two to six pound ultralight rod. I like the two to six pound rating and an ultralight rating because it allows you to cast really easily and it's a lot of fun to fight these fish of any size on that light rod. What I have on here is a 3000 series Okuma reel with about a 10 pound braided line. The 10 pound braided line is really crucial in this scenario in my opinion because it casts really easily off of the rod. The small reels and the small guides on these rods don't let you cast a heavy line very far. So if you want to cast any amount of distance, you're going to want a 10 pound braid or something around that diameter, that 10 pound or that 12 pound. What I have here is a little 10 pound fluorocarbon bumper and that fluorocarbon is nice because it's very clear. The fish don't see it. It allows you to cast and fish right in front of them without them being spooked by the line tied on with a double sturgeon's knot. And if you guys have ever watched any of our tutorials before, or you can go back to the links in the description and find some of the tutorials on how to tie some of these uni knots, I have a line, or I have a knot tied in between my braided line and my fluorocarbon line. You can see where that color changes. And that there is just with a double sturgeon knot. Very easy, very easy to learn, and it's actually on our YouTube channel if you wanna go and learn how to tie it. What I have coming off of that is a little bobber stop here. This is a little bobber stop that I tied myself, but you guys can find the bobber stops in the store, whether they be the little rubber Bomax or any sort of P-Line or Poochie bobber stop. It's just a little clear or a little red piece of rubber that slips over your line, or any of the thread bobber stops that come on a little piece of straw that you slide up your line, slide off the straw and pull tight. You're gonna use those bobber stops to control the depth of your bobber. Off of that line, going about 10 to 15 feet of my fluorocarbon bumper, just depending on how deep the lake is that I'm gonna be fishing, I'm gonna add that bobber stop and then I'm gonna add any kind of bead or corky to sit above my line or above my, my uh, weight here. The beauty of that corky is that you can see if your line got wrapped, you can see when you start fishing because this will be laying up on the water. It'll slide all the way down. The bobber stop will hit this so that it won't go any further and then it'll go down and sit on top of your bobber, which I'll demonstrate here in a second for you guys. What I have here on this is a 3 8 ounce bobber with a little quarter ounce weight underneath. You can use the same rating as the bobber if you need to, but I just had a quarter ounce and it works just fine. What I've done under that is gone with a barrel swivel straight to a six pound fluorocarbon leader. And why I'm gonna go lighter line with that leader than I am my main line is because I wanna be able to break that off if I get snagged, but also I don't want those fish to be able to see my line as much, and so I use that six pound fluorocarbon, which is nearly invisible in any water condition, all the way down to my bait. And now that we've kinda of just tapped on the word bait, that's the really the beauty of this rod setup. This allows you to not only fish every kind of bait there is, but fish it at different levels in the lake. Using just a plain night crawler a lot of the time, if you try to put that on the bottom of the lake, it will just lay on the bottom and the fish won't be able to see it. So having that slide float set up, being able to adjust yourself to be sitting a foot or two off the bottom where those fish might be sitting and patrolling looking for food, it's gonna allow you to cover more water bases and more structure in the lake. So what I have on here is just a couple of power eggs and, and a little smorgasbord of power eggs and some worms. 
Some of the options that you can use on this slide float setup, why again it's so versatile, is because you can use almost every bait that there is out there and still effectively fish it. I have some night crawlers here. These are just normal worms or night crawlers you can pick up at any tackle store, just like so. I have some marshmallows, which work really, really good. These are the Procure Marshmallow Magics, just some scented marshmallows. We have your typical power bait, something that we've always seen. We can get in any different colors or tastes or sizes, power bait here. And some of the easier ones, ones I always like to have in the bag are these power eggs. These are just little, basically the same formula as this, just made into a harder ball and put on a little chain there so that you can bust those little balls off and put them on your hook and allow you to fish those small pieces of that power bait. And they're very, they're, they're a lot of flotation in them too, so they'll keep you up off the bottom. And these ones come in garlic or any kind of other sh scent that you can think of. So the beauty again of that is that you can fish all these methods even together. You can go with a marshmallow and a worm. You can go with power eggs and a worm. You can go with just a plain worm. You can go with any sort of bait, whether you have shrimp or you're using some sort of mealworm. Anything fishes on that setup. The way we're gonna fish this setup is very simple. How you're gonna be able to tell you're fishing is you're gonna cast it out into the middle of the lake and you want this bobber to be sitting straight up and down. I'll try to cast out here into this little flat spot so we can see it a little bit better. But I'm gonna cast that out and the way that you're gonna be able to tell you're fishing properly is you're gonna see that line sinking. Sean, go ahead and zoom in on that bobber. And that bobber is gonna stand straight up and down just like so. If it's any different than the way it looks right there right now, you're gonna know that you're too deep and you're gonna wanna shallow up your bobber stop, up your line, allowing that bobber to not go as deep down, or the, your weight to not go as deep down into the, into the water column. So the way I'm sitting right there is perfect. I'm just gonna set this down, let it fish, and we're gonna pray and hope for the best that the fish gods will bless us with some fish today. So the second thing I'm gonna sit down and talk to you guys is the other rod that you're gonna to wanna to have in a beginner situation. And that is your hardware rod or your spinner rod or spoon or anything like that. So come on back down here, we'll go over this rod and show you some of the setup that you're gonna to wanna to have. So the second setup I'm gonna recommend you take to the river or the lake or the pond is your hardware rod. What I have here is the same two to six pound ultralight rod, same 10 pound test, same 30 series reel, same 10 pound bumper tied off of that. But any kind of hardware is what's gonna go on. This is gonna be my rod that I cast and retrieve. What I have right here is a cast master and a, and a silver and orange. What I have here in front of me is a lot of the different options that's now getting super soaking wet because we're getting rained on out here. But here's some of the options that you have. You have things like these rooster tails. You have cast masters. You have any forms of spoons, Rapalas, anything that you can actually cast out there into the lake and retrieve. And the beauty of this is it's a way that you can cover a lot of different water. We got some different spinners here, some little bit heavier ones. Kind of the whole run of the mill. We got blue foxes, we got Rapalas, we got cast masters, we got it all. But every single one of those are gonna be effective in hunting for the fish. The nice part about these methods is that you can cast a lot, it's very interactive, you can move around and you can cover water and allows you to identify where the fish really are in the lake before you fish your bait or your setup off the bottom if that's what you're doing at the time. But that slide float setup, the, the spinner setup or any kind of thing that you're gonna cast and retrieve like so, we'll show you guys here now. The casting and retrieving of this is going to be simple. Something like this cast master, I'm going to cast out into the middle of the lake just about as far as I can. That's the fun part. You can see how fast you can, or far you can cast all day. I'm going to let that sink to the bottom. And with this cast master, I'm going to do just a little jigging motion, or I'm just going to reel it straight back in. Same with any of the spinners. You can do a jigging motion, or you cast out, wait till it hits the bottom, and then just do a nice steady reel back into your line here, waiting for those fish to bite so that you can set the hook. So the best way to get into trout fishing is to fish a few different methods. That way, every time you hit the lake, you're learning every single step of the way. And the entire time you're out there, you're becoming a better fisherman because you're using different things and you're trying different tactics to fool these fish that, that might be tricky depending on where you live in the country. So if you guys have learned anything here today, be sure to go down here, hit that little button to go over to our page, Addicted Fishing, and check out some of the other tutorials and some of the other how-tos that we do about trout fishing, salmon, steelhead, everything, basically any sort of style of fishing in the world, we have a little bit of content on for you guys to learn something about. So if you have learned something today, drop a comment below, hit that little thumbs up, and do not forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification so that you guys can see all the cool content we have coming out every day. You guys stay fishy, stay out there in the lake, keep fishing, and we'll see you out there.